Hello, welcome back to GC Optimus Gaming. Dr. Jason here, and today I'm going to be doing a video about the honor opener in the policy tree in Civ 5. I know uh, it's not really a viable tactic often, but I think just for fun, uh, I take a look at it because I've tried it a couple of times with a couple of different Civs opening with honor. And you know, most of the times that I've tried it, it actually worked out well, and I end up winning the game. Uh, this is all single player, though. My schedule does not permit me to play multiplayer games. So, you know, it's quite possible these practices and theories could crumble against an intelligent opponent who can see what you're doing. Um, but nevertheless, nevertheless, not nevertheless. Um, so, you know, when... Do you want to do an honor opener in Civ? The answer is rarely to never, because uh, you have to meet a particular set of circumstances for things to work out in your favor. Um, and firstly is, if you're not picking your own Civ and it randomly pops up, it needs to be an ancient war Civ. You know, so Venice off the table. Uh, they need to have either a couple good ancient units, unique units, or they need to have a unique ability that allows them to do really well in the ancient era. It's all dependent on, right off the bat, being successful. Uh, secondly, you need to be close enough to your enemy cities. City-states are not that important in this, I could see attacking city-states is somewhat viable, but opening honor is basically saying to your opponents, I'm going to, and I need to, take you out as soon as possible because I cannot catch up in the long run. Opening honor. Ancient era opening honor means I'm going to beat you up for the next 20 turns. After that, well, I better have killed you or I better be playing catch-up fairly well. Um, and I don't know if I said this already. This is more of a challenge. This isn't, uh, you should do this as your main tactic. This is something fun. If you've been winning too much and you want to try something different, try this. Uh, third, you need a good production capital. Uh, if all you have around you is grassland, no, it's not going to work. You need to settle on a hill. You need to have a hill to work right away without a forest. You need straight off the bat to have that four production. Pretty sure it's four. It might be five. You might get an extra from uh, settling on the hill. Um, and you need barbarians on. They're essential for culture farming, XP farming, and also a bit of gold, but the culture and XP is a little more important. And, you know, it's this isn't necessity, but it's helpful to have it close to your capital, close to where you're punching out your units. And barbs aren't entirely needed. You could do a tactic like this without barbs on your map, but you'll find yourself getting irrelevant uh, starting even in the classical era if you don't have barbarians to continually farm in peacetime. Um, so let's right off the bat here sort of look at which civs are viable for this, because I said you need an ancient war civ and some of the ancient war civs don't even make the cut. Like the Greeks, they don't make the cut. Um, and the reason being is their unique ability doesn't help them. Um, companion cavalry is too far. Three Texan, I believe it is. That's uh, way too far in. Oplite, that's two Texan. But if that's the best thing you have is two Texan, not, it doesn't even make the list. Um, and, you know, I should have mentioned this before, but what I mean by Ancient War Civ is you need to be able to, in the first 10 turns, start being able to pump out your unique units or be able to pump out units that can take advantage of your unique ability. Um, okay, who's next? Siri doesn't make the list again because the Siege Tower takes so long. Huns, we're starting off a good one. This is, there's only two civs that are really, really excellent at opening honor. 
and the Huns is one of them because your battery ram replaces your spearman, which I find very weird, but it's very useful because that's two Texan. I think it's the best ancient era unit in the entire game. Um, Horse Archer, I don't know. I can't remember off the top of my head how many Texan. I want to say it's. I want to say it replaces the horseman. So I think that's two Texan. But even if it's three, um, I think it can move. Its, its movement is very advantageous. It can pillage and shoot and move all at the same time. Um, and in addition to these great units that you can get out relatively early, their unique ability is useful from the start. Raising cities quickly so you don't have that unhappiness penalty as you're fighting, because again, fighting is everything, so you need at least to be at zero happiness when you take these cities. Don't care about barring city names. Animal Husbandry is helpful because it's a production tile. And plus one per pastor. Not really that useful um, because you're going to be focusing so much time on producing units early game. And only after you get out your massive ancient war army are you going to start thinking about getting a worker. Ideally, you'll capture one from a city-state. As you happen to walk by finding a, an, a, an AI or a real person to kill, that's not a city-state, but, um, you know, that, that will come in later around the time that you're finishing up your horse archers, I think. Could be wrong. Uh, Rome does not make the cut. Germans make the cut because their unique ability allows you to build up that army faster your big ancient army, and uh, the less unit maintenance you pay, the better, because, you know, if you're going in the negatives in gold in the ancient era, you're <laughs> you're already real far behind in science then. Think until markets you're not going to get a gold-producing building unless you're China. So that's, that's going to be problematic, and that's a way to guarantee you're going to be irrelevant um, after the ancient era, even if you take out like two other civs and take their capitals, you know, if there's still three more, they can probably walk all over you in the classical era or medieval. Because by the time they get to medieval, you'll be in classical, they have pipemen, you still have spearmen, waste of time. So this gold is helpful, so you can keep maintaining that big army. Okay, next up, you're skipping over a lot of civs. Our next excellent, excellent Civ for this, the Aztecs. They only have two bonuses. You know, the Floating Gardens is sort of meh. Um, I think it's several Texans, so it's a waste of time. But, er, no, it's two. Jaguars. Like I said, you need to pump out your unique units right away. This replaces your warrior. Um, and it's... Not a bad warrior replacement. Most of the ancient era starting unit replacements kind of suck, which is unfortunate. Um, but they run through jungles and woods as if they're flat land, even if they're on the hill. So hilled forests are your friend. You get a defensive bonus. You get a movement bonus. Um, and in addition, the jaguar... Heals, not to full, um, but it's a certain percentage of their health once they fully kill. So that's super useful. These jaguars are really going to be essential early. And, you know, you can imagine if you have such a strong melee unit that's really hard to, to kill, your enemy's going to have such a hard time, even if they amass an army to fend off because they know what you're up to. You know, you're still going to put up a great fight. You're still probably going to take their city with these, uh, with this unit. So long as you get there, well, the Jaguar is still relevant and they don't already have spearmen or uh, composites. And their unique ability is great because it's, it's like you're already opening honor, but not just for barbarians, for everyone. So the Aztecs gain so much from automatically 
seeing someone saying, I'm going to kill you. I already have, you know, I've already pumped out three jaguars by the time I found you. There's your warrior. There's a settler. I'm just going to murder you. And you know what? It's going to give me culture. My jaguar is going to reheal. I'm going to get XP for this. And now I'm coming for your capital. So, excellent. I think the Aztecs do a really good job of playing catch-up as well, which is why, despite the fact that they don't have this, or another unique unit or something better than floating gardens for opening honor. The culture allows them to fill out the other policy trees that they should have filled out earlier instead of opening wonder like an idiot. So excellent top tier right there for opening honor. Um, believe it or not, Babylon makes this list simply because of the bowmen. Um, they're better than an archer and I find when you open honor and engage in ancient warfare, your archers are vulnerable. The bowmen, the Babylonian bowmen, is resistant to melee attacks. So I find sometimes when I'm employing this tactic, I have an army of five archers surrounding the capital. They take one warrior. One warrior can take out two archers. Now I'm down a couple units that attack the city. And I have to sacrifice my melee units to take that city then, all while having to deal with this warrior that they put out. Uh, the bowman negates that, because they have about a warrior's, res little less than a warrior's resistance strength to melee attacks, uh, which in the ancient world is pretty good. And if you beeline bowmen, pump out warriors before you get them, then pump out the bowmen, you'll be fine. Another reason this makes the list you know, despite only having one unit and nothing else, the walls, but like we care about offensive, who cares about defensive? Uh, discovering writing and getting the great scientist will help you play catch up. Um, even if you're behind, the science that you get from putting down that university is still a tiny bit greater than what other people would have, would have by now. Even if you know, it takes someone having three or four pop and a library in order to have the science you have uh, five pop, I think, because you would have grown in your capital city. So you've, you can play honor and you can level out with them. Still not that great. There's way better openers. That's why they're not S tier on this. They just made the list. Um, who's next? Oh, yeah, believe it or not, the Maya, the Atalist, you start off with them. And it is so amazing to be able to pump out your ranged unit right away. Little weaker than archers. It does not replace the archers. Um, so you're stuck with these guys until composites. But the fact that you can right away uh, start farming XP on your range units means by the time you get in classical these um, are still viable you know if you've properly caught up which they are capable of doing with the pyramid because it's culture and or sorry not culture it's a faith in science and they can build it right away um, you can catch up with the pyramid you have a Super leveled up analyst, maybe by the classical era, even it has the promotion where you can fire twice. Level that up to composite. You know, you've caught up and you're a dominant uh, military force in the classical era. That's amazing. They have the great person bonuses, which will come in handy. Just like Babylon, you can probably choose a great scientist or religion. I think by the classical era, you'll be caught up and you can choose whatever you want to. Play it an entirely different way if you say opening on a stupid. Uh, next, the ink goes well. The slinger kind of sucks. Um, however, the chance to get the unique bonus where they can evade a melee attack is pretty beneficial uh, for farming XP. And additionally, having no movement costs on hills is excellent because that means your melee units, your range units can get into defensive position or just a, you know, a stronger position 
without having to go through that awful terrain cost. Uh, so they make the list, but they're probably at the bottom of being able to make this list. Egypt. They have only the cha war chariot. But the war chariot requires no horses. It's fast. It's ranged. It's, you know, it's enough for you to say, I'm going to beeline the war chariots and I'm just going to punch out warrior after warrior after warrior after warrior. If you punch out a ton of warriors and then eventually just make like four war chariots, you can spread out over the continent in all different directions to just conquer anyone in your path. Because these guys, <clears throat> uncomfortably strong in my opinion. If you have enough warriors by the time you get these guys, it's viable. Not, not amazing, they're like second to last on this list, but doable. Shaka, um, honestly, I almost didn't put them on this list. Uh, but, again, the gold, so you don't fall behind too much, though I feel like that's Zulu's specialty. And 25% uh, less experience. That means that by the time you're in the classical era, your military is going to be amazing. The Ikanda, you know, you have to research spearmen to get that, I believe, which isn't amazing. But once you have it, you can make sure further into the game you have a, a dominant military force. And that's it for the tier list. So let me just play through the beginning of the game and show you what it looks like. Okay, I feel like I didn't shut up about the Mayans. So. They're who I'm going to demonstrate. Um, not the best production start like I wanted, like we need. Um, in fact, it's not a production start at all. I'm going to just have to settle here and hope there's another hill. Okay, there is good. I don't like this forward strange because it's going to, you know, maybe take us a while. But this is what you need. At the very least, you need to settle on a hill and you need a hill. Ideal, you spawn on it so you don't need to waste a turn. But we have to. Um, so let's just do that, and, okay, good, um, let's, where would I get the best view, there, okay, great, so here's a thing, with the ruins, you're really hoping for, uh, advancements on your technology, right away, you just want to work a hill. You might want to get up another population, uh, like doing something like this would be fine. You know, it's, yeah, either way it's four turns. This is fine. So a growth tile, you know, two food and one production is fine. And you could do one of two things. We can either beeline a stronger melee unit, or we could do this so we know we're playing catch up. Oh, also with the culture, or the ruin, you're hoping for just a culture ruin. Because, what did we get, gold? Okay. The reason being is we want to open honor ASAP so we can start farming, farming the culture from these guys. So I'm going to take uh, this guy and get that in hopes for Spearman upgrade, because I... Actually, what am I a comp bow? Well, whatever, we'll just do this. Ooh, this is so ugly, this marsh. Um, okay. So what we want to do right now, if we're planning to open honor, is, again, opening honor is a gamble. Planning to open honor is a much bigger gamble. I would say most of the time you don't plan to do it, it just sort of happens. See, now these guys are three turns, which is nice. So it's it's okay to get up second pot. Um, okay, we got pottery from that, I think. Wasn't really... Oh. Yeah, it didn't really tell me. Um, but either way... Oh, we definitely got pottery because I was beelining for spearmen. So that will help us with catch up more. A good thing with opening honor and spamming these units is you know that you're going to get a handful of these ruins. So I'm going to do three 
Atalists, and then I'm going to put out another Warrior, I think. Okay. Here's Vatican City. We'll go to Pantheon. Not that it really matters. One, two, three, four. They're just outside of our territory for us to get the faith. One. So, if you're opening honor, I'm glad I completely forgot that I needed to mention this in the video, so I'm glad I happened to meet that city-state. There's only a couple... Um, if you want this to be short and sweet, if you think you have the ability to make this short and sweet, there's really only a couple options for you. It's uh, growth rate, which will help you hardly any. Plus one in cities of pop three or, or more. So if we work this tile, it'll take about seven turns, I think, to get up there. No, it should be five. And then we'll be at pop three. Those Atalus will probably only take two turns then. Um, fishing boats would take too long, so that's a no. This one is okay. We wouldn't need to wait to get up a population. We'd just get an extra hammer. We get extra gold. We get extra science and culture. Uh, God King is not that bad. I might pick that one. Um, I, I'm sorry I didn't write this down, so I wasn't prepared for this. Yeah, those are really the only three maybe viable ones. Oh, sorry, God of War. If you have a real close this thing, then that will help. The way this works is the unit that dies, so when I kill a Barbarian, the Barbarian needs to be within four tiles of my capital. It can't be my unit, so I can't be here. One, two, three, four, I'm within four tiles. It can't be here. It needs to be here. Um, as far as I'm aware, it matters the tile that the city is founded on, not the borders. But I could be wrong of that. Um, but we're going to do this just because that would help out a lot. And remember, we care more about actual civilizations. We don't care about city-states too much. We're going to farm this guy. And I was hoping that'd be open, but it wasn't. Okay, see, if I had God of War, this would be one, two, three, never mind. Pop room. Okay, so we'll farm this guy. We'll go there. And how many turns until... Okay, we'll do one more Atalist. We'll do a Spearman. And then hopefully by then we'll have found our first victim. Yep, Brazil. Okay. Um, you can think about taking city-states. The only thing is you want to make sure there aren't duplicate luxuries in your capital, because there's no point in taking a city-state if you go away. If you're not going to get a, a unique luxury from it. Okay. And I'd like to leave that guy there. We're not going to hurt him. This is going to be a difficult city because Brazil um, has a jungle bias. If we were Aztecs, we'd be able to ignore that. Okay, honor. I'd like to do a video on piety as well. And, ooh, let's look at the, the tree while we're at it. So, my recommendation is to do the left side first. Because this gives you free general and increases the spawn rate. Um... And this this is dependent entirely on the sieve you're playing as, which side you should open. But for most of them, left side first. Because your archers are much more vulnerable. If you're playing as a sieve where you think your melee units are more important, like if you're playing as the Huns and they have the battering ram, which are your lifeline, then I would probably do discipline. But for most... We want to get that general for an attack of and defensive bonus for all of our units that are adjacent to it. And then the more experience is really useful for having just a ridiculously powerful military. Um, this one, both, both of these, these three I'd say are decent. Sorry, I should have mentioned when you open you get culture from killing barbarians. 
So that's why eventually we'd like to just have like a couple archers planted in places. There aren't really many good places here, here. It could be anywhere. And we just boom, 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 boom. If we shoot them every time each archer shoots, it, they'd get four or no, three XP instead of two. And when we finally kill, we'd get culture. If we had God of War, we'd get faith as well. If we had all of the policy, we'd get gold. But you probably won't get all the policies in Play Honor. Um, this is mm, subpar. This is an option if, you know, you've already invested in this and you say, I might as well continue with honor. You can use this as a, a monument, basically. That gives you one happiness as well. And you pay no maintenance cost except for the unit. So it's like a, it's like a monument that has a defensive bonus. Basically, a monument that gives you happiness and it has a defensive bonus for the city. But, you know, if you need to ever use the defensive bonus, you have to you have to get rid of the monument bonus, which is unfortunate. But eventually you'll find you have so many units you can afford to leave a scout in the city. This is okay. If you want your army to stay relevant in up into classical medieval, you'll need to upgrade all your units from atalists to comp bows to crossbows and you'll need that gold i don't care so much about the barracks and the armories because i don't think it's that important to have that free upgrade it's, it's useful but again we're talking about ancient era warfare maybe if you get this in if you kill enough barbarians get enough culture to unlock this in ancient, then that will be very helpful for, for building barracks. If you don't get this by the end of the ancient, it's kind of useless. Okay. So let's see how this will play out. We finally discovered it. We're going to make a couple spearmen. Statue of Zeus. I know a lot of people will give it a bad rap. I find it very, very useful. Um, because... You know, 15 combat strength when attacking cities. Add that to uh, general multiplier. They don't really have a chance against you. I'd like to note that when you open honor, you're going to be on the lower end of the spectrum. But your military is going to be able to take their score from them. Um, and look how the, the pyramid just takes two turns as much as I want to do that for my logical senses, because I know it's not smart to open honor, and we're not going to. And we'll just farm this guy for a little culture, so the time we're over there, maybe the general can happen. Um, I don't like this guy here, but swamps give you... Oh, it's not Brazil. So many places we got to fire from. One, two, three... Four, five ish. And we have four atalysts. Okay. So once this guy comes out, we're going to move all the units over there and we're going to take that city. So probably by turn 25, we're going to take Mecca. And let's look at the unique luxuries. Wine, not that great because um, to play catch up, you also want to settle a city with another unique luxury. So this. Wouldn't have been a good honor opener, but I, I think we knew that from the start. Now that we're here, uh, we want to start thinking about how can we play catch up. We know we have enough units to capture this. They don't have walls yet, as you can see. So this will be fine in 10 turns taking that. We won't have a problem. We need to think about how we need to play catch up. Now, if you're an experienced Civ player, I don't need to explain that to you. But you're going to want to catch up on population. You're going to want to catch up on science. We've got Lucky with the Pop Room. And uh, being Maya, we have the Pyramid. So writing's not all that important. Um, I'm going to focus on unlocking our luxury. I hate ocean luxuries, because then you need to try to defend it from the barbarians. 
So we're going to go masonry. Hopefully next turn. Oh, it won't be next turn because I don't want to completely destroy them. We're going to start moving this guy over there. We're going to get some view. Look at the damage we do with the Atalists. It's pretty good. It's annoying against real or the AIs is they don't there's no way for you to say like get away that's my barb camp <clears throat> okay that's where one guy Ooh, what's unfortunate is they got a spearman room so we may run into trouble unless they decide they want to scout with that which I hope they do decide to do that they're probably going to come and try and to take that <clears throat> so we're just going to leave them be for now and hopefully they'll die. Get some view there. I think it's important we start playing catch up. Oh, what's the maintenance cost on this one? That's not that bad. We're at zero right now. Ooh, something I forgot to mention you need to do is you need to tribute along the way. We're too far from Valletta now to tribute. <clears throat> but as you pass by all these city states to get to another civilization, you're going to want to tribute. Alrighty, so I've moved our units over to Mecca, and we're about to declare war. Um, what I want to do is, I've been looking at some technologies, and we're going to go next for our national college. We're going to puppet this, make it a library. And, oh, we're almost done with building that. Yeah, and the time I took to walk my units over at POP3, from here to there, we've done about half that progress. Um... I think I'll do next turn and see if that guy goes to a better position. Yes, that's what I want. Oh, you know what? I should have moved my units near, so next turn I can declare war. Whoopsie doodle. It's fine. We'll live. Oh, don't go on one of my production tiles. I hope he's... Well, okay. We'll give it one. We'll give it one more turn. Oh, you little... Okay, yes, we'll deal with this. Okay, great. Two turns until that would happen. We're going to declare war. We'll give you back that gold you've been giving us. I should have moved this guy over a bit ago. So everyone could get that nice bonus. He's probably going to attack the warrior. I hope not the Atalist. But look at that. First turn of attacking... It, you know, it took us about 30 turns to get here. Uh, that's towards the longer side that it should take. Ideally, it should take about 15 to 20 turns for us to build an army of this size, get it over to another player's capital, and start the first attack. But even this late into the ancient era, you see I'm about to dip into the classical era. Even this late, it took me one turn to get it down to half health. Um, look at that. They don't have walls, so they could do nothing. All we're going to do is fortify. This guy's helping out so much, the general, Akbar. We're going to keep promoting these guys. Oh, always do this first. See, we missed that one experience. Now they should be getting... Oh, they're getting four. Well, that doubles it, which is interesting. Um, can we take it? We'll wait one turn. It's not like they can kill any of our units this turn. Um, I would like to cap capture that worker. I hope they move in a spot that that will happen. But I don't think so. I know what we can do. Just do that. And then I want to upgrade this spearman. He's the most important. And look at that. We've dealt with him. We're going to puppet this. We're at four happiness, even after taking another city. Because uh, we have the units. So, another thing. Now, you know, now we're at top. Turn 32, we have half the capitals in the game. And let's see what cities. Or, what buildings. What? Okay. Interesting. Uh... <laughs> the Arabs built my unique building. I'm not mad. <laughs> but that's 
a bug. Um, they might have been finishing it last turn and then me taking it allowed them to use it. Interesting. That's good to know. So let's think about what we've achieved. Oh, and if you shoot them from your city, you can do that. Let's think about what we achieved, what our next steps would be, hypothetically. So, hypothetically, in nine turns, or we're going to start off in our capital city building a library. Hypothetically. Or not hypothetically, that's what we're doing. In nine turns, we can build a national college. So that means in nine turns, uh, probably around turn 50, will I have completed the National College? That's pretty early, and we've opened on it. So that will help us maintain being a power, a relevant power, through the classical into the medieval. Where we might fall apart is if we just maintain this stagnant state. Because, you know, you've taken a capital, your unit, your military's there, and you're like, ugh, it's so much work to keep micromanaging this military. Sorry. If you open... I just don't want him pillaging that. If you open honor, that's what you've accepted for yourself. That you're going to be micromanaging military units for the rest of the game. And in addition to that, you have to play a liberty game. So what we've done is we've carved ourselves out, you know, undisputed territory. I will not be competing for all of this land here. Probably a good section of this land. That's where I'd probably first expand because there's going to be more unique luxuries. And I have the military to defend it. So let's say I am sick of micromanaging my units. Remember this policy here that gives us local happiness and it gives us uh, culture. If our religion continues and we get uh, an enhancement which allows us extra happiness for rivers or something like that, that's a pantheon, isn't it? But whatever. Then our units, if we no longer want to micromanage them, we can keep them inside our buildings. Now settling a city is only two unhappiness. If it's on a river, that's only one unhappiness now. And we can play this ridiculous liberty game. We can probably fit four to five cities in this area. One, two, three, four, five. There's six-ish. And in, in, you can't see where my hands are going. In this continental area. And we, and we push three more right here. That's about ten cities we'd have. And we do it after our National College. Classical era, 10 cities, National College already. I'd say that's pretty impressive. You need to make sure you don't stagnate after that is the only thing. And what are you... Now that, now that I've shown you, you know, this can be viable, we're in a pretty good state for page... Page... For turn 32. What are the gambles? The gambles are becoming irrelevant. Let's say your neighbor, let's say this wasn't Mecca, let's say this was uh, Mongolia. They love spamming units. If they had three melee units in their capital, I would not have been able to take that as easily. It would have taken me at least five turns instead of two. So that's what we're up against. And if you don't succeed in taking a capital city... You, you have failed the honor opener. Um, there's a chance that you can double back and take these city-states. I wouldn't really bet on it, because by the time you backtrack city-states, they always aim for defense, they always aim for getting technologies of whoever has the most at the time. And if that's you, you've beelined for the best military tech, so they're going to have the military units that you have as well. So you need to focus on the other civs and not the city-states. Um, I guess I guess the biggest gamble is really becoming irre irrelevant. Your military being ir irrelevant because you didn't beeline correctly, you becoming irrelevant in ancient era. Imagine that. That would suck being irrelevant in ancient era. 
but you're also risking even if you succeed. Like right now, I could mess up in the classical era. Maybe I didn't. You know, I haven't built a granary. Maybe that will mess me up when I get into medieval. And who cares if I have 10 cities? Um, I could still be irrelevant by then. Another thing is, if honor isn't going well for you, there's a way you can catch up by going into liberty. Uh, An honor liberty mix will go well. But if you're like, oh no, if I just punch out three more units, maybe I might be able to take this one stupid, pointless city. No. If you don't have the power to just overwhelm your opponent, opponent and take a good city, and you're fighting for scraps with your subpar military, you need to try another style, because you're probably irrelevant. But if it goes well so far like it's gone here again, you have this area where you can fit probably 10 cities in, you're set up for a wide game, you're set up for a military-dominated game, and uh, maybe a cultural game. If we have, you know, there might be a barb camp over here. If this, was, if this is larger, I don't think it is, there could be one here, there could be one here. That could set us up for a cultural game. Just farm and farm and farm. And if we were the Aztecs, we could farm and farm and farm other Siths. But I hope you liked that video. Leave a like and a comment if you want to see me talk about opening a piety game. Because that'd be fun. Also, if you're interested in seeing uh, Tradition versus Liberty Opens, I personally, I've learned a lot from Filthy Robots, Civ Tutorials. But I don't always agree with what he has to say. Some things he says, oh, this is garbage, never do it. Some of my best games have been using it, and I've done it again and again and again and again. So if you want to see that, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe. I'll see you next time. So just an update, because, uh, you know, I, I thought, let's see what can happen here. Um, I just didn't like how many units were near my city with uh, the Hawaiians. Actually, I just, he was just in my way, so I declared war and kill his two warriors, his Mwari warriors. And my military score is so high that within five turns, I think actually I only declared war on him three turns ago, he said, please take my city. I'll accept. It's probably going to make me unhappy. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to end up raising it. Um, or maybe I'll keep it, because it's in a place that I wanted it. But... Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. Um, I have to keep building my national college because he gave me that city. Um, and here's another thing you can do. Say you're so gold positive that you know, and you have extra luxury resources like I had a minute ago until this archer ruined everything. That you can trade with people because the AI is going to want your lux resources. Say, sure, show me where your capital is. And sure enough, it's right here. And I don't want him taking this, but... I think, you know, in the next two turns, again, still no walls, because we're still in the ancient era. Look at that. Well, now we're there. It's going to be beautiful. In the ancient era, we are, you know, about to take our next city, and then it will just be the Hawaiians left. So, yeah. Okay, so the final update before I'm done with this video. It took me two turns to capture Thebes. And this is sort of one of those tipping points where you need to watch out now. Because the world hates you, they're going to be less willing to deal with you. All you have to your advantage is, hypothetically uncontested if there wasn't Polynesia, land. Um, and if this were against real people, <clears throat> you they wouldn't be doing such stupid forward settles. Unless their capital's right there, then it's not that stupid. But again, I have this giant peninsula. Great, I wouldn't say great, but defendable city there. There's hills there, so that's probably defendable. And this is an excellent liberty area. I'm 22 turns away from my next policy, but again, keep in mind, I'll be attacking barbarians and getting that culture back so I can go a proper liberty opener and treat the rest of the game like I've been playing liberty 
It's just instead of building up your cities and creating all those units and then getting a capital, I made all those units, stole two capitals, and now I'm going to build up all my secondary cities. And I'm making 17 science per turn. Nine turns, I'm going to have my national college. It took a bit longer because we had some barbarians on our growth tiles and unhappiness, but nonetheless, we're eight turns away from market, which means by then we'll be able to fix our gold problem. By turn 60, we're going to wrap up all the issues that come with playing liberty, that come with playing honor, and we're set just for the bonuses of a liberty game because we already have those markets to fill in for the loss of gold. We already made sure capturing these cities succeeded. We have all this open land, except for where that city's about to be. So for real this time, thanks for watching.